In a recent video I said we'd look at a Roman helmet. Let's do it. This type is known as the Gallic Imperial H, and it came into use around the middle of the 1st century AD, or CE. This design is in fact similar to the ones that preceded it. That is to say, a bowl with, I suppose what you call a reverse peak at the back. It was primarily made of iron, but as you can see, there are brass bits to it as well. In terms of its weight, this is around one and a half kilograms, so just over three pounds. Romans would probably use some sort of padding inside. Um, I know when I wear mine, I use this, which is a sort of just a cloth cap. There are some really interesting aspects to this helmet, which I'm going to get to in a subsequent video, such as the, the cheek guards, the ear guards, and the reverse peak, and of course, the front ridge as well. So please join me and ask any questions in the meantime if you want me to cover anything you think I might not cover. Anyway, speak soon. In the last video I spoke about the different parts of the helmet that I'd want to look at and talk about. So let's start with these, the cheek guards. Cheek guards weren't anything new. They'd been a design that had been on previous versions of the Roman helmet. The premise of them is simple. They were to stop anything coming across, a chopping or a slicing motion going past the face. And it's worth considering the face was one of the few parts of the body on a Roman legion at this time which was fully exposed. The cheek guards therefore had the advantage of stopping any kind of slices that might have come across the face. And I think this is really important, perhaps not as well understood today as it would have been back then. You might be thinking, OK, a slice across the cheek, it might leave a cool scar, but it's not going to do much else. Well, think of it like this. In the time that the Romans were fighting, one of the biggest killers was what happened after the battle, when you went back and you had a wound of some description which could get infected and lead to death. If you were a Roman legionary, a lot of resources had been invested in you, from training to kit to just about everything. The Roman army wanted you alive as much as possible. When I've been wearing the helmet in the video, you've probably noticed that the cheek guards have been opened. In fact, they would have been held together. There would have been a piece of leather, a thong or some sort, going across between these two points. This would have been a sort of chin strap and it passes just around here, just under the chin. That small ring just there would have been where the leather thong or piece of cord or whatever it was would have looped through. Due to wear and tear, it's actually fallen out on the other side. So I don't have anything at the moment to loop any cord or thread or whatever it is through. You don't want something passing across the throat, which if someone then got hold of your helmet could pull you back or even worse start to strangle you with it. Time to look at the side of the helmet and at the back. First up, the ear guards, which are quite prominent. Apologies for how dirty this is. I will do a clean up video on the helmet at some future point. But you can see just how prominent these ear guards are. They really do stick out. And that's simply to stop this. You don't want the ear either being chopped from the front or the side. You might be asking yourself, if you're that worried about the ears getting hurt, why not just cover them completely? Well, the answer to this is quite simple. Legionaries, even prior to this, have been asked to operate in a tactical sense. That is to say, they need to be able to respond to a situation on the battlefield. And this meant listening and be able to hear commands issued to them. This meant that you didn't have to worry too much about losing an ear, but you could also hear what was going on on the battlefield and respond accordingly. And in fact, this actually links in to the front because you look at the front of the helmet and it's pretty open. Okay, you've got the cheek guards, but there's a big space where you can see what's going on. And that, as I said, it links in. If you can hear what's going on, you can see what's going on. It made you very tactically aware. My favorite feature of the helmet is, funny enough, the neck guard. The neck guard is at a much more of a sloping angle than in previous helmets, where it's almost a horizontal ledge. It also splays out a fair amount. It's not just tight and sort of almost narrow with the neck, which is kind of down here. It goes out quite a bit, surrounds the sort of side of the neck as well. Developments or changes in armour are usually because the enemy have sussed it out in some way. So it's possible that this extra defence or extra protection around the back of the neck was because at that point in time, the enemy or anyone the Romans would come up against had realised they could get round the back and attack that sensitive or unprotected area. And that's one of the reasons why I really do like the Imperial Gallic Age. It's a helmet which shows a lot of adaptation, therefore Rome is still responding to threats, as it ever did, but it also showed you what the Legion was expected to do, 